Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss about the overfeeding in decision trees. So what is overfeeding? It is the effect of overtraining our model. For example, in this figure, we can see that we have two classes of, of data points, the blue ones and the red ones. And one classifier model is the black line that tries to separate between the two classes. And then we have another classifier that is the green one that also tries to separate between the both classes, but is trying to accurately not miss any of the points while the black line, it is actually missing some of the cases. Which model looks more natural for you? Clearly, the green one is not a natural model. So in general, there are sources of errors in training sets. For example, we have errors that comes with our data, typos, wrong numbers, outdated, outdated data sources, any kind of errors in the numbers. Also, we have errors coming from biased training sets. For example, in general, in practice, sometimes we have only specific samples that could be labeled, or maybe it's too expensive to acquire more training cases. So in that situation, we are going to have a training set where it's not actually really representative of the real distribution. So when we overfeed, our model is also feeding the errors, and we do not want that. We want our model to feed the important patterns such that it will perform well in the future. It means that it has generalization capabilities. In other words, that when the model starts seeing new data, it's going to classify it well. How would look the overfit in the case of the regression scenario? Let's say we have this set of training points. Um, so we have three model alternatives. First, the linear version, then the quadratic version, and then just connecting the dots. So the linear model seems too simple, right? Actually, we get new, new cases like the red dots. It is very likely that the linear model will miss those red dots and it will have um, big errors. In the other hand, the model that connect the dots seems to be too complex. And in general, when we have a too complex model, when we get new cases, as in the red dots, it is very likely that the connect dots model is going to miss those data points as well. An alternative, and somehow a compromise between both extreme alternatives, we have a quadratic model that probably will work better with future cases than the linear and than the connecting the dots approach. So what is bias? The concept of bias is related to the degree of simplicity that a model has. The higher the bias, the simpler the model. So here we can see that the linear model has the biggest bias among these three alternatives. On the other hand, the variance tells us how much our model changes when our training data changes. In other words, it's like how sensitive is our model to the to changes in training data. So here in the same three models, we can see that the connect the dots approach has the biggest variance in this case, because if we change some of the training points in this approach, the model will change a lot. While in the linear case, if we change some of the, of the training points, it is very likely that the model will mostly be really similar. So there's a well-known trade-off in machine learning that is called the bias variance trade-off, where we can see in this plot that when the, the variance increase and we have two complex models, the bias also decrease and that creates big error values in future cases. The other, the other extreme is when we have a too simple model. That means that the bias is large, but the variance is very low because the model is really simple. And in that extreme case, also the error is big. 
So the ideal case is to be somewhere in the middle where we find a compromise between bias and variance, where the model is not too simple, but also not too complex. In those cases, in general, the model has better generalization capabilities and performs well in future data. So how looks the overfitting in decision trees? Well, this huge uh, tree is, is done on purpose. It, in the sense like in general, when we have one decision tree that is huge, it means that somehow it is overfitting the training data. So how we can avoid overfitting decision trees? The idea is to stop the tree construction when the number of remaining rows are not statistically significant. So the idea is to prune the tree or delete one piece of the tree, in other words, a subtree, and replace it by a leaf with the most frequent class in that location. We are going to see a couple of examples here. We use the pre-pruning method when we stop the tree in a specific moment of the building process. This is also called early stopping. Recall from the previous video, when we were building a tree, we didn't take care of the amount of rows we were using in order to find the stopping criteria. In this case, we will. We will see an example later. And in case of post pruning, what we do is like we just build a full decision tree without any restrictions. And after the tree is built, we start searching for some subtrees and replacing those subtrees with a leaf and see if the tree improves. So this is an example of a post pruning. So let's say that this is a full decision tree that we built without any restriction. Then we randomly choose any of the internal nodes, for example, that one, and we replace the whole subtree below that node with just one leaf node with the most frequent class at that point. And we compare both trees. So if the right tree has a better performance, then we stick to that model because it's simpler. In the pre-pruning case, as an example, imagine we have this training set. And again, at some point, we reach a node where when we split in the three possible edges, we see these three tables. And let's imagine that our criterion is to stop the construction when we have less than four rows. In this case, we can see that all our tables have less than four rows. So instead of keep selecting the best variable, we will just set a leaf node with the most frequent class. So in this case, for example, instead of selecting the best variable between name, gender, or place, we just are going to put a leaf node with the class frequent because it has two cases compared to occasional that has just one case. 